Last Friday morning it wasn't raining and I had a very good idea. So the fuselage just fits in the shed the wrong way round as such. The limiting factor was actually wanting to get the top longer on level and missing that beam up there. But there's about four inches clearance, which is fine. That meant I could rig the tail properly. So with the top longer on level, a plumb line behind the stern post and both tail planes on and rigged level. So that's quite good. I'm rather pleased with that. The worst thing about having it all rigged this way around is that wire there, which either bang my head on the vice or garrot myself with the wire. Not sure which is better. If you were unfortunate enough to watch my previous film about wires, you'll know that I found the top wires too long, slightly, and the bottom wires a bit short. Well, one viewer made the very sensible suggestion that maybe I'd got the wires muddled up. I was going to measure twice before doing anything else, but Jeff, you were quite right. Well done. Um, <laughs> this goes to show it's very easy to do. And of course, all the wires were marked up the same, i.e. no markings. So I've marked them now one to four. And not only have I done that, but when I put the ends back on, I took the ends off completely. And then they all went on the same amount. So they're all on 30 turns which is about an inch, but I measured inside with a nail and the wire on all of them comes to just below the fork, which is ideal. So now I've got a not only a flying wire to grow up myself on as I go through here, but also the camera to bang my head on. So I'll show you now. If I clip the bottom fork end on the little bolt that's coming through, can see the wire is about the right length. There's a little more adjustment still. In fact, these tangs, I had a measure up earlier off camera, these tangs are one inch hole center. When I measured up the Aronka C3 ones when I was last down at the hangar a few days ago, they are seven eighths of an inch. And these wires, which I've, I've again, all off camera, I've messed around and just given them a, a place on the aeroplane. So this number four wire goes here, but number one wire goes above. They all sit very nicely and all the cable tangs appear to need about a seven eighth center. So that's what I shall make. This is a chunk of eighth of an inch 4130. I've got a line marked on it here. And well, I'm sure Dale in Alabama will be delighted. I'm going to cut a couple of lengths off, one here, one here. The grain on this piece of 4130 runs that way along the sheet. And grain on 4130 matters. So a couple of nice long pieces. And then each one will make two cable tangs. Well, that didn't take long. There's a bit more material here than I need and I marked them out probably wider than convention would say they need to be. The minimum width for the fitting is really three clevis pins diameter and the pins I'm using are 3 16 so the minimum width of the fitting should be 9 16 but I'm going a bit wider something like three quarters. There's no harm in having a bit more material on the fitting. It's hardly going to make any difference weight wise as each fitting is only going to be an inch and a bit long. I think we'll go next door. It's warm in there. Dehumidifier's been on and the drilling machine's there and the other bench vice. So let's move. I'm going to get on and make these four cable tangs now. They shouldn't take very long. You might be admiring my little bench anvil here, which is very useful for doing things like um, center punching 
and cutting cable, although it's always worth sticking a sacrificial piece of metal on the top like that if you're going to be standing some cable there and then hitting it with a chisel. It's actually a piece of broad gauge railway track from the Brunel era. A lot of the railway lines, particularly the Brunel influence ones, down to the West Country from London, built around sort of 1840 to the 1870 period, were broad gauge. That's seven feet and one quarter inch gauge. And they were laid with this, which is called Barlow Rail, and this is just a short length of it. The broad gauge ended in 1892 after the Battle of the Gauges, and a lot of this stuff was taken up. But lots still survives, used as gate posts, fence posts, and all manner of things, anywhere near the railway line in sort of Somerset, Devon, and Cornwall. This is rather a useful chunk. Anyway, time to get on. There we go. I spared you the filing. I suppose, truth be told, I spared me the editing. Anyway, we'll go next door and bend them shape. I've got the workshop door propped open. It's really windy today, blowing about 45 miles an hour, although we're reasonably sheltered here, so it should be okay. I'm sorry if the sound's a bit funny. Anyway, what I want to do is bend these ear brackets, obviously, to fit here. So I thought I'd bend a piece of welding wire first, about the right angle, and then I can bend the brackets in the vise. Overdone it there a bit. Tiny bit more. That'll do. I'll do the upper ones first, and then I can throw the piece of wire away and bend another one for the bottom. Unless it's about the same. No, it's not. The bottom ones are a little less. So I'll just check again. Right, let's do the top ones. I'm going to bend the cable tangs in the vise here. This vice is just like my great aunt Dolly. It hasn't got any of its own teeth. And so it's ideal for holding fittings. And I've actually filed the back over slightly. I did that ages ago, but I've just given it a quick tickle to make sure there are no burrs or anything that will mark the, uh, the brackets as they bend. So I'll put a line on them. It's a little way in. Doesn't need to be accurate. <laughs> and uh, most assuredly, it won't be and then into the vise. Let's make sure we're up enough. I want it just enough so the washer and the bolt head go through the tailplane are on a flat bit and then I want the rest of it bent up. So I think, I think that's about right. And then I'm going to use a piece of aluminium was our American friends call it aluminum and a big hammer and bend this to the right angle. Right, let's try that with the wire gauge. Clock put a camera in the way. Right, it's about halfway so far.
think just a gnat's crotch it more and it will be there. Yep, I reckon that'll do. Before you fall off. Let's try it against the other one. Yep. Very good. Well, that's two. There we are, Greta Thunberg. You po-faced teenage witch. I'm going to use the same piece of wire and uh, there we are. Saving the planet one bent piece of wire at a time. I've just taken a bit of the bend out of it and that'll do for the, for the lower wires. I've had to shut the doors, all manner of stuff sort of blowing in the shed, including vast amounts of leaves. And uh, it's even windier than it was earlier, although it's quite nice and sunny as well. Anyway, I want to swap these wires now. Of course, if I just take these wires off, particularly the top wires, then the thing's going to collapse and uh, the tailplanes are collapsed downwards and bend the bolts and it will be a frightful mess. I've got some Air Ministry approved string here, so I'm going to replace the top wires with Air Ministry approved string and then all the wires can come off and we can stick the streamline wires on with their cable tangs. Now the string's on I can take the Bracing wires off. I'll take the low ones off first. Well, the good news is the wires all fit. Just swing the camera around. But the cable tangs need bending ever so slightly. The top ones need a little bit more bend on them. You can see on that top wire there, it's got a bit of a bend in it. I haven't done it up tight. Just needs a, another couple of bashes. And that one does too. The lower ones are almost there. I'm going to just tweak them as I've got to undo all four to get two off. Of course, I'll just float this in front of the camera again. When I did these original wires, of course, there's a lot of adjustment there. And whilst I think the bend on here was pretty good, because of having that adjustment there, even if it was just a small amount, it didn't actually matter if the bend wasn't exactly right. Well, it, it does now. They're very close, so I've only just got to take the through bolt off on each side, give the fittings another bash in the vise, and then try them on again. I'll do them one side at a time and just tie the lower wire up out the way so it doesn't buckle.
Well, that's much better. They both line up pretty well now. So I'll do the same on the other side and then we can sort of tension them and get the stern post vertical and the tail planes horizontal. That's, that's very encouraging. Well, there we are. In the usual way, I sort of pressed on. It's not been very easy to film at all. I've opened the doors briefly, but the wires are on and everything is square. You see the fittings at the far end there. They just all needed a, a quick bash, but that was all. I'll just tilt this back a bit. Then there's the wires running up to the top. I've left the Air Ministry approved string on because I'm going to take the tail off now. Whilst it's dry, I'll jam the doors open. I don't just trust the stays this afternoon. It's so windy. It's unbelievably windy. And turn the fuselage around. And I guess the next thing to do is, is get on with the firewall. So I guess that's it for this year. Merry Christmas, everyone. Happy New Year. And we'll pick it all up again in January. Thanks for watching. See you then.